When I mention the country Kazakhstan, what are some of the things that come to mind? I'm certain that the answers will vary greatly, but that's okay. I'm gonna try and channel all that energy into my criteria, as we're gonna be doing the Kazakhstan of each continent. But first, let's establish those three boxes, shall we? Box one for the Kazakhstan of each continent will focus on a growing, promising economy. This means countries that are experiencing significant economic development and expansion, showing potential for future growth and prosperity. Just like Kazakhstan, known for its emerging economy driven by industries such as oil, gas, mining, and agriculture, the entry should have a similar developing economy of that nature. Moving on to box two will be being a melting pot of different cultures. Kazakhstan is infamous for being a blend of surrounding cultures, with examples being Russian, Mongol, Muslim, Turkic, and Central Asian nomadic traditions. So each entry should have a good mix of different cultures that defines its current society today that rivals the likes of Kazakhstan. Lastly, in box three will be simply gotta be big. All right, pretty good criteria, right? Let's hit it with the first pick. The Americas, Brazil. Now I know what you're thinking. Brazil? Really? But hear me out. Brazil's a developing economy fueled by industries like agriculture, mining, and manufacturing. And also Brazil is experiencing significant economic growth and is considered one of the world's emerging markets, just like Kazakhstan. Now, not to the degree that economists were predicting in the early 2000s, but still. I mean, it's not like we're dealing with a third world country or anything. Speaking of which, both Brazil and Kazakhstan are in economic trade unions with Russia. For Brazil, of course, I'm talking about the BRICS. And for Kazakhstan, I'm talking about the Eurasian Economic Union. But enough about the economy. Moving on to box two, Brazil, much like Kazakhstan, is also a melting pot of cultures, with the vast majority of the population being of mixed ancestry, which includes the likes of Portuguese, Bantu Africans, indigenous, Japanese, and other Europeans like German, Italian, British, and Spanish. Brazil's cultural landscape is as diverse as they come. And let's not forget about the landmass. Brazil is the fifth largest country in the world by land area, covering over 3.2 million square miles of territory. From the Amazon rainforest to the sprawling cities of Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro, Brazil's vast landscape rivals that of Kazakhstan. Interestingly, despite their size, neither of them really conduct much responsibility for the global community. So for all these reasons, Brazil earns its place as the Kazakhstan of the Americas. There's also a couple other parallels that I like that weren't a requirement in my criteria but I still want to mention them. So both Brazil and Kazakhstan have capitals that were artificially built for the sole purpose of being the capital, and in recent memory as well. For Brazil, we have Brasilia, a city designed and constructed in the 1950s to replace Rio de Janeiro as the capital. And similarly, Kazakhstan's capital, Astana, was founded in the late 1990s to replace Almaty as the capital. And that was it, I just wanted to mention that. I thought that was cool. Next entry, Africa, Egypt. For box one, Egypt's economy has been on the rise, with its GDP looking pretty good. This economic growth is driven by various sectors, including tourism, manufacturing, agriculture, and natural gas production. For instance, tourism brings in a lot of cash, with iconic landmarks like the Pyramids of Giza bringing in tons of visitors every year. Also, Egypt's natural gas production is booming. with big finds in the Mediterranean Sea helping boost the energy sector. Plus with Egypt joining the BRICS gang of emerging economies shows that it's getting more serious recognition on the global stage. And just like Brazil, there's a parallel between Kazakhstan and Egypt that doesn't necessarily have to do with one of the boxes, but I still want to mention. You see, back in the day, Kazakhstan was a part of the Silk Road, the ancient trade route connecting the East and the West. And you'll never guess what material was sold on the Silk Road. Now fast forward to today, and Egypt's got its very own version of the Silk Road, that being the Suez Canal, of course. This man-made waterway connects the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea, making it a key route for ships moving goods between Asia and Europe, just like the Silk Road of old and the role it played for its economy and trade relations with the rest of the world. I couldn't help but bring it up as it's one of the main reasons why I picked Egypt over someone like Ethiopia or something. And it's on for box two. Egypt still ticks this box, but I'd say less so than Brazil does. Nonetheless, some of the world's most iconic civilizations like the Greeks, Semites, Romans, the Ottomans, and the Nilotic peoples have contributed or have been influenced by Egyptian society as a whole. What makes Egypt's society different from Brazil is its longevity. And that's why Egypt has stood the test of time due to these pillars of human civilization. And just like how Kazakhstan is the bridge between the East and West, Egypt is the bridge between Africa and Asia, literally and figuratively. Speaking of which, let's talk about the size of Egypt. Now granted, Egypt is by no means the largest country in the world, but it's certainly not small. What it lacks for in land mass, it makes up in population, as it's one of the few countries on Earth whose population reaches over the 100 million mark. So I'd consider that a tick for box three. Overall, not a perfect fit, but I still think it ticks all the three boxes pretty comfortably. Oceania, Indonesia. 
Straight off the bat, this pick is controversial. And not because you might disagree with my pick, but merely from the fact of just saying Oceania. Just understand that from now on, if a country has territory in two different continents, then it is eligible for those said two continents. So for this case, Indonesia, despite having most of its territory in Asia, it still holds territory in Oceania, in due part thanks to West Papua. So for that reason, it is eligible for both of those continents. Now that I've gotten out of the way, let's start with box one. Now when we talk about Indonesia, we can't ignore its rich history of trade. From the ancient Srivijaya and Majapahit empires to the bustling spice trade of the Dutch colonial era. This tradition still continues today, with the GDP surpassing one trillion and a diverse array of industries driving its expansion. Indonesia is slowly but surely becoming an economic heavyweight on the global stage. So just like Kazakhstan's historic role in the Silk Road trade went network, Indonesia's legacy of commerce fuels its current economic momentum. I also want to mention Indonesia's membership in the G20 that further solidifies its position as a key player in the global economy. Box two. Indonesia is a brilliant admixture of Asian and Oceanic cultures. The pillars of this region are synonymous with Indonesian society as a whole, with these pillars being Malay, Javanese, Chinese, Indian, Melanesian, and European influences during the Dutch East Indy days. The roof that makes these pillars a complete structure would be the collective Muslim identity, as Indonesia is the largest Muslim-majority country by population. And speaking of the fact that Indonesia is the largest Muslim country, for Box 3, Indonesia is huge, by size and especially population. It's literally the fourth most populous country on Earth, only behind India, China, and the United States states. And it's the 15th largest by land area. Although not as impressive as the population stat, it's still no small feat, with the square mileage being 700k. So need I say more? This is definitely a tick. We've ticked all three boxes, and now it's on to the final continent, and likely the one that you've all been waiting for. Europe Romania. For box one, Romania has been experiencing insane growth as of late, mostly in due part to its rapid industrialization and its investment in information technology. And this has caught the attention of foreign investors, which has expanded and diversified its economy better than anyone else in the region. It goes against all stereotypes of Balkan countries being hopeless, deteriorating countries. And speaking of which, Romania being within the Balkans has resulted in it being the butt of many jokes, as all Balkan countries do. I think it's fair to say that they are beyond whatever sweeping generalization is made about them. And there's actually a lot of cultural common ground with its neighbors, despite being a perceived outcast. With a blend of Slavic, Ugric, Latin, and like most Balkan countries, Ottoman influence as well. What perhaps Romania is most famous for is Transylvania, which was historically ruled by Hungary, and it's why there's a significant population of ethnic Hungarians living in Romania, mostly concentrated in Hargita and Kovazna. This all happened because after the loss of the Central Powers in World War One, Austria-Hungary had to give up some of its territory through the Treaty of Trianon, and since Romania was aligned with the victorious Entente, they were given the rights to this land, contributing to most of the size of modern-day Romania. And speaking of which, Box 3. I mean, it's not that big, but I've already picked it. What are you gonna do? But how can I talk about Romania without mentioning the Romani? Now, if the Romani or singular Roma isn't ringing a bell, it's because they're typically called, especially in the English-speaking world, as gypsies. And although that term may be more familiar to you, it's typically agreed that the term is uncouth. So I'll be using the endonym Romani. Now the Romani people are not exclusive to Romania by any means, but they do have the most. And it's a common misunderstanding that the name Romania is because of the Romani people, but no, that's just a coincidence. Just like the nomadic traditions of Kazakhstan, they too traditionally live a nomadic lifestyle and have contributed to the culture and traditions of Romania while being very secluded at the same time. And overall, I'd say Romania is a decent pick for the Kazakhstan of Europe. But how does it compare to the rest of the entries? It's time to rank the countries. All things considered, I'd say Romania is the second most accurate. At the bottom, I'd have to put Brazil. Even though when making this video, Brazil was the first country that I thought of. And right above Brazil in third will be Indonesia. And in first place is Egypt. Again, I wouldn't have expected that, but I think what really sets Egypt apart from the rest of the entries is the fact that it's the bridge between two continents literally and figuratively. Which is what is most often said about Kazakhstan, being the bridge that brings Europe and Asian society together. If you disagree with my picks or have any better picks in mind, let me know in the comments and thanks for watching. And be sure to join the Discord so that you can vote on the next country that I cover.